whether that's hot or as cold as ice. The way the temperature behaves in space is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. Now space is a crazy place because simple perceptions and realities that we take for granted here on Earth aren't realities at all or work very differently in the context of the universe. For example, foundational things that make up our concepts of reality like up and down are things that do not exist in space. Our perception of time here on Earth very different than how time actually behaves in space. Gravity and its effects on time and space, the way that light behaves, like everything is different. But one of the things that's always eluded me until I decided to look it up is how temperature behaves in space. Because when we think about space, we think about it being cold, but it's really not. But it's not hot either, and it's not lukewarm. It's nothing. Space has no temperature. You see, for something to have temperature, it has to have mass. It has to exist. And the whole point of space is there's nothing there. It's empty space. It is a vacuum. When we talk about the temperature outside, we're talking about the temperature of the air. And while we normally don't think about it, air has mass, it has weight, it has volume. And a lot of it, when you think about it, hurricanes and tornadoes are made of air. They can blow away buildings. And now maybe you're not a slightly nerdy person with too much ADHD going on and spend way too much time thinking about random shit like how things heat up and cool off. But I do, and this is a concept I'm very familiar with, mostly because I like things with motors. See, motors generate heat that you need to get rid of relatively efficiently or the motor will stop doing motor things relatively quickly. And to get rid of that heat, you have one of two and a half-ish options to choose from. You have air-cooled engines, which you're most likely familiar with on things like motorcycles and lawnmowers, where the cylinder and or engine casings have a bunch of metal fins. That increases the surface area of the engine that air can come in contact with and the air absorbs that heat from the engine, keeping it cool. And then you have liquid cooling. And now if we're being honest, most liquid cooling Cooled engines like the engine in your car are still technically air cooled, but I'll get into that in a second. 100% liquid cooling would be something like a boat motor where it takes liquid uh, water from the lake and uses that to cool the motor. It pulls cold water from the lake or ocean, runs it through a bunch of water jackets or basically little tubes inside the motor. The water absorbs that heat from the engine and then it is expelled back out of the motor. And then you have liquid cooling like what you would find in your car. And this uses the much more efficient system of running water through the internal parts of the motor and then it runs that water or cool through a radiator. And that radiator is basically just a bunch of tiny little tubes that the water runs through surrounded by a bunch of metal fins to increase the surface area and it just makes a massive amount of surface area for the surrounding air to pull the heat out of that water. There's also oil cooling and stuff like that which is similar principles but we're not going to get into but the point is that while these are different types of systems they use the same form of transferring heat which is convection. But that's not the only way to transfer temperature. It can also be transferred by evaporation. This is what happens when you sweat. The moisture from your sweat absorbs the heat in your body and evaporates and that transfer from heat into kinetic energy cools you down. What all of these processes have in common is they're transferring heat energy into another form of matter. Generally into the air or the water but it can also be done into the ground or into the walls of your home. And to better illustrate that if you've ever driven your car at a high elevation like up in the mountains and you've noticed that it starts to overheat when you're asking too much of it that's because the air is thinner up there. There's less matter for that heat to transfer out into the atmosphere. Or if you've ever been in a really hot and humid place and you just feel like your sweat is sticking to you and not actually doing anything to cool you down, that's true because the air's already accepted all of the water that it can and your sweat can't evaporate to cool you down. But objects in space don't have air or water or other materials around them for that process to happen. But yet hot objects in space still get cold. And this is why people say that space is cold because while space itself has no inherent temperature, the objects in space, unless they're close to something hot like a star, tend to be cold. And my question has always been how? And that's because heat also turns itself into electromagnetic radiation. Or the thing I'm running out of is the storm blows in, light. Now generally not visible light, although it can, you all seen a fire or things glow red when they get hot enough, but lots of other types of light waves as well. Like when you use an infrared camera, it's just picking up the electromagnetic light that heat is emitting that we can't see. And since light is just energy and heat is just energy, as it's emitting that electromagnetic light, it is cooling down. It is losing its energy and that's why it gets cold in space. It's called thermal radiation. What's even crazier is, well, that's an incredibly effective way to transfer heat in space. It doesn't work very well on Earth at all. And that's because in space, there's a lot of, well, space. 
space to disperse all of that thermal radiation into. But here, the air traps it and gives it back off. Other objects trap it and give it back off. And it just cannot escape via that method efficiently. And because of all of that, you know, the, the water vapor that you see floating above my head here, and the carbon molecules, and the methane molecules, and the nitrogen molecules, and everything that makes up our atmosphere, trapping that thermal radiation, those electromagnetic waves, that's what keeps our planet from freezing by not allowing our planet to just thermally radiate all of that energy back into space. And this is what's crazy, is thermal radiation is used to cool spacecrafts. That's how well it works, is all that energy that they absorb from the sun, they dispel through thermal radiation, along with all of the processes and equipment on there creating heat, they dispel through thermal radiation. And planets are cooled the same way, but some planets more so than others, like Mercury, which sits the closest to the sun and takes on the most thermal radiation of any planet in our solar system, sits at a balmy 333 degrees. But Venus, the planet in between Mercury and us, which doesn't get quite as much thermal radiation, is absolutely cooking at an 867 degree Fahrenheit average. And then we average a nice, comfortable 60-ish degrees Fahrenheit, and then Mars, our next closest planet just beyond, negative 85. And I tell you all of that to help you understand that global warming is real, you climate-denying morons. And the fact that the tantamount ways we think thermal transfer transmutates temperature is only tangible terrestrially, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.